A diameter of a circle is an axis of symmetry. It is a metrical entity, but it can still be understood morphologically. Namely, it is the axis of a harmonic mirroring whose center is the infinitely distant point perpendicular to the axis. That is, any point A on the circle determines a line in the center P, which in turn determines a point Q in the axis P. Now our usual method of completing a quadrangle gives us the harmonic conjugate B of A with respect to P and Q, and B will always lie on the circle. Pause if you want to polarize this procedure on your own. Any line A on the circle determines a point in the axis P, which in turn determines a line Q in the center P. Now our usual method of completing a quadrilateral gives us the harmonic conjugate B of A with respect to P and Q, and B will always lie on the circle. Can a circle be mirrored harmonically onto itself from a center that is not infinitely distant? Choose a center elsewhere in the plane and construct from it a complete quadrangle on the circle. The diagonal associates the four points on the circle pairwise harmonically. Test. Construct a different complete quadrangle from the same center on the same circle, and you get the same diagonal. Conclusion. Any line from the center of harmonic symmetry through the circle and the diagonal gives a harmonic range. When the line rotates into either tangent, the two intersections with the circle coincide. So the tangent points are the double points of a hyperbolic involution in case you know what that means. Ask your friends from the previous cultural epoch whether they know how to construct tangents without a compass. We call the point P the pole of the line P with respect to the circle. And the line P, the polar of the point P. Let the pole travel out to the infinite distance, and you again have symmetrical mirroring at the diameter. Try the same construction from a pole inside the circle, and the polar lies outside. Here again, two harmonic ranges are marked. Apply the same test by choosing two other lines in the pole. And the diagonal again remains unchanged. This time there are no visible tangents in the pole. The involution is elliptical and has no visible double points. Involution will be introduced properly soon. The whole construction relying solely on incidents, it works on circles seen in perspective as well, also known as conic sections.
move the pole closer to the circle and the polar approaches. Move the pole onto the circle and the polar becomes the tangent at that point. If the pole lies in the interior of the conic, the polar does not, and vice versa. Move the pole to the metrical center, and the polar becomes the infinitely distant line. Now start from a polar and find the pole. Choose any line in the plane and construct from it a complete quadrilateral on the conic. The diagonal point associates the four lines on the circle pairwise harmonically. Test. Construct a different quadrilateral from the same axis on the same circle and you get the same diagonal point. Conclusion. Any point in the polar gives a harmonic pencil by connecting with the conic and the pole. Preview. This holds good even if the point in the polar does not generate any visible tangents. Likewise, even if the line in the pole does not generate any visible tangent points, it does generate a harmonic range by connecting with the conic and the polar. More about that when we get around to the so-called imaginary elements in a later presentation. Note that this way of constructing a pole and its polar actually gives you three. Now think the construction in movement. It always associates the same pole and polar, but the polar triangle, shown here in yellow, shifts. And with it, so do the tangents. It follows the tangents whose tangent points align with the pole intersect in the polar and tangent points whose tangents intersect in the polar align with the pole. And that leads to the fundamental theorem of pole and polar. The pole of any line in a pole lies in the polar. And the polar of any point in a polar lies in the pole. This is easy to understand if you see the conic as the perspective image of a circle, the pole as its center, and the polar as the horizon. The tangent points align with the pole, meaning they lie pairwise opposite one another on the circle which is to say that the tangents there lie parallel. So of course they are going to meet in the horizon. Or if the pole lies outside the circle, you can see it as the vanishing point and the polar as a diameter. Remember the Steiner constructions for conics? The points joining corresponding lines of two projective pencils plot a conic. The lines joining corresponding points 
of two projective ranges envelop a conic. Last time, we saw that cross points or cross lines give the center or the axis of a projectivity. With respect to the Steiner curve, these turn out to be the pole of the line connecting the two projective pencils and the polar of the intersection of the two projective ranges, respectively. Given a point and a line knot in it, construct a conic such that they are pole and polar. Choose one point of the conic and find its harmonic conjugate with respect to P and P. Repeat. And once more. Once you have six points, there is no more choosing. Complete the conic with one of the methods shown in the earlier presentations, namely Steiner or Descartes. Pause if you want to polarize on your own. Choose one line of the conic and find its harmonic conjugate with respect to P and P. Repeat. And once more. Once you have six lines, there is no more choosing. Complete the conic with one of the methods shown in earlier presentations, namely Steiner or Brianchon. Given two poles and their respective polars, construct a conic. First of all, the point joining the two polars has to be the pole of the line joining the two poles. So you already have three. Note that this is not a polar triangle though, assuming you started with general position. Choose a point of the conic and construct its three harmonic conjugates with respect to the three pairs of pole and polar. Now keep repeating this procedure with the new points. In this case, the further points are not going to be farther points. They are all going to approach line R. To reach other areas, use Steiner or Descartes. Pause if you want to polarize on your own. Choose a line of the conic and construct its three harmonic conjugates with respect to the three pairs of pole and polar. Now keep repeating this procedure with the new lines. To reach inaccessible areas, use Steiner or Brianchon. As we saw at the beginning of this series, polarity in the plane is between point and line. In space, it is between point and plane. 
So if you want homework, try constructing the pole of some odd slicing plane, perhaps with respect to a hyperboloid. Synthetically, of course, no centers and normals allowed.